peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's bright out here this morning. I ain't mad. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, sometimes you just gotta, just gotta take stock, you know? And, and, and this is in the, I, I read, a, I, listen, I read a, um, a quote this morning on Facebook. And it said, uh, don't get stressed when you're in a storm, dance in the rain, right? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and I like that. And I had to think about it because yeah, I've been going through a few things, you know, a few things. Uh, uh, unfortunately, you know, I saw on uh, Facebook that a, a sister I knew from years ago, talking about like 1992, uh, she passed, you know, she had some medical ailments and it was a, it was a weight on my heart. You know, we were pretty cool, we were close, you know what I'm saying? And, and um, she got two children, man, a son and a daughter. And, uh, you know, physical complications, I guess, you know, caught her with her, man, but that was a weight. Um, and a lot of other people, I'm looking at, you know, like I say, you know, I may not be in touch with a whole lot of people, but I, you know, I'll scroll through Facebook and I see, how so many people are losing people. You know, people's families uh, are dying. You know, some of the elders, but so many of the youngest from this COVID. I mean, I'm talking about people from the ages of 40 on up to like 50 in between, like dying from COVID. Stuff is serious out here, man. And, um, you know, it's life. I, I know that everybody's suffering. Uh, my car started giving me, you know, transmission started acting up on me. That put a lot of weight on my head because, you know, I'm in DC, metro everywhere. I can travel to metro, but the convenience of a car is something. But also a lot of the side jobs I do, painting and otherwise, you know, those are in different spots, kind of far reaching sometimes. And, you know, sometimes just wanting to do for people and, and you know, setting up other uh, jobs, not being able to readily take care of that because of, you know, that malfunction. I was waiting then the amount of money they wanted to uh you know replace my transmission you know two thousand dollars like come on and of course i've looked in different spots and no one can really guarantee a, a real good transmission for a good price uh, with a guaranteed you know good time frame so you know it has to be done but um i'm saying all that to say that uh man life life will hurl hard balls at you, will hurl stones, will hurl rocks, bricks, boulders, you know, and even death at you, you know. And that's the nature of it, you know, life. That is that is the definition. Life is not just breathing, you know. Life is everything that's coming with it, you know. So um, I strive to embrace it, and it's not easy. I was looking up a few words this morning, one was pride, and it, and it means to take uh, pleasure in one's accomplishments, one's appearance, you know, one's uh, successes, and so forth, you know. Um, but it also has a, another side to it, being prideful. Um, to be stubborn, to be uh, hard-hearted, um, unbending, unyielding. And I see that out here too. Um, but I saw so much in prison. Uh, there are a couple of guys, man, we had bonds for years, years. Walked the yard. Uh, one I know was, I, you know, one of them, I was, I was influential in this brother's life and him changing, you know, him changing from, you know, uh, being a kind of reckless young gang member, and he wasn't young, uh, to, to, to evolving into, you know, striving to do more and be more. Uh, and we don't even have bonds anymore. You know, I made a comment to him. Uh, early last year. I didn't hear from him in five months, you know, and so when he finally called, and that was because a female friend of his told him, you know, uh, that I wanted to speak to him because of that. And when I spoke to him, you know, I cracked a little joke. You know, I said, man, I ain't heard from you in five months, man. It was happening, you know? And, uh, you know, he gave me, you know, a brief excuse, COVID. But that wasn't what it really, what it was. You know, he was on the phone every day with his lady friend every day, all day, and that's cool, you know, but I was in there. Right, I was in there with you for uh, 10 years, walking with you, keeping you out of trouble. Um, you know, always, you know, concerned about friends and family. When your brother died, I was there. And, uh, 
you know, after that comment, you know, he had called, I believe. I didn't get the phone. Um, my phone was charging or something. I didn't get to it at the time. And I believe it came from only because I have two or three brothers calling from that particular prison. Uh, but I, I didn't get it. But I haven't heard from him since. Um, and I haven't reached out. And I plan on reaching out, you know. And, and you know, I've only mentioned this to maybe two other people. Um, and my brother, you know what I'm saying, that, that I'm with all the time, you know, he was like, man, it makes no sense, you know, that you didn't put so much energy and effort into, you know, people uh, just to have them, you know, not do the same. Uh, but I also was looking at a piece uh, from Minister Farrakhan yesterday. It was, it was a clip from uh, uh, something he had spoke about not too long ago. He said the human being has been blessed with the quality, you know, of mercy. When you look around, man, you got people that have really transgressed against us, man. I'm talking about friends, family, you know, people at work. Like, I mean, disrespect. Ah, oh, you break, you know, ah, oh, get in each other's face. Ah, you know, you have family members that have borrowed money and ain't give you a dollar back, you know, and will be in your face asking for another another chunk of change without even giving you the chunk that they took from you because it wasn't bald, you know, took from you um, previously. Like, you know, and then one of the terms they used to, you know, is where'd they do that at? <laughs> you know, like, it's amazing to me. But we've also forgiven these family members. You know, we've had friends that we've argued with. Some have physically fought these people. And we've forgiven them. And so I look at pride and I ask myself, how prideful am I? And believe me, for those that know me, I'm a, I'm a real humble person. I wasn't always humble. I mean, humble in the sense that I, you know, I respect people, but not humble in the sense of I let you get me. Once you get me, man, we ain't got to talk ever again. That's how I was. Because I looked at it like this. If I didn't cross you or disrespect you or transgress, you know what I mean? If I didn't bring anything wrong to your life and you bringing it to mine, bye. That's how I looked at it. And I was serious about that. I've had guys come to me and say, bro, Khalid, man, you you cold. I'm like, how am I cold when I've been your friend, when I've been your brother, when I've been everything you needed me to be? I ain't required nothing in this relationship, this brotherhood, this, you know what I'm saying, this familyhood. I ain't required nothing. I done brought, gave, never took, you know, offered, never received. And I was okay with that. If you bring disrespect, then I was like, you know what? I put my hands in the soapy water, wash them, and I'm done. Uh, but then another brother I know, man, real good, you know, good brother, man, I know for years, um, Paul Taylor, he, we were talking one day in the cell, and uh, he was talking about his own situation, you know. Um, you know, strong brother. You know, I'm going to be honest with you, brother out here doing a lot of things in the Richmond area. Uh, has his own nonprofit called Sanity, standing against negative influence towards the youth. And he's doing big things. Um, got a brother named Prince with him, brother named uh, my man uh, Catchmore is with him. Uh, so far as, you know, working every day, man. Brothers brothers hit the ground running when they came out of that prison. But um, we were talking about, you know, forgiveness and mercy. And uh, a brother had killed his, his sibling, right? This guy eventually got locked up in another state and started writing him. He let me read the letter. He didn't say who it was. I read the letter. It was a lot of uh, quotes, a lot of uh, quotes from uh, Prophet Muhammad in the Quran. And I was like, okay, sounds like an imam or a scholar or something. Brother sounds sharp. And when he told me who he was, I said, what? Man, I got five brothers, you know? My brother Suleiman, my brother Sinus, my brother Omar, my brother Tafi, my brother Rashid. Listen, and, 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 and and not blood, but just as much as, believe me when I say this, my brother Roy. So that's six. Man, you take one of they lives. <laughs> Listen, I don't, I can't even fathom that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, my brother Rashid out here right now, man, in the streets of DC, riding subways. His mind is not right. Uh, he'll tell you he works for Obama. He works for, you know, the administration. He never completed school. He'll tell you that he has a, he went to medical school, everything, but everything that was wrong with my mama, you know, uh, my biological mom is, is was wrong with him. He's bipolar and schizophrenic. And that's a great weight because when I'm talking to him, I just remember my brother when I left him when he was eight, nine, you know, he was functioning fast, running and talking and laughing. And I come home and 
He's telling me stories, man. I'm looking at him in his eyes and he seems like he's so convinced that he really works for Obama. He told me he was making a movie. And when I'm looking at him, man, you know, tears in my eyes, man, because I just remember the little brother I left and I see all the time and I'm wondering where did this come from? What triggered it? What happened? I can't, you know, that's not me. But when Pete told me that, I looked at him and I said, man, you're a stronger man than me. And he said, man, I wrestle with it every day, bro. He said, the man started writing me about a year ago. He said, it took me a year to respond. <laughs> he said, some letters, he said, you know, we write sometimes. He said, some letters takes me six, seven months to respond. And he was no weak guy on the street. You understand me? He was no fool, but he was no weak guy. He was uh, in his area. He was serious. He was a force to be reckoned with. So when he told me, man, he had, you know, responded to the brother on a couple of occasions, I said, how? Now, how you do that? And he gave me a quote. He said, Prophet Muhammad said on the last days, peace be upon him. He said, on the last days, God will look at your uh, plate and he will ask you, what big sins did you forgive? And when you reply, you know, he will forgive you yours based on what you forgave. You know, and that's a mean piece, you know, because it's easy to forgive somebody they they then give you a dollar back. That's a that's the type of person you are. Some I know guys that man, you you owe them twenty dollars, you don't pay them back. Man, they, they they cut you off. I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say this. You got people out here on the street right now, the same way family. You mess over their money, see see what happens. You can't call them. They might block you, <laughs> you know, from from all social uh, uh, media and contact because now they feel like you're interfering with their lives. They feel like you're interfering with their pockets. You know, their their their, their evolution, their success, etc. So, and I understand it, but that's extreme, but you have something like that. And I'm like, don't take from me. But again, years ago, I used to, I let, man, I ball, I let a guy ball. And I, it was a five, like a few dollars, five dollars. He owed the debt. I paid, you know, paid for it to keep him from fighting. But then it was like, he took his time paying me back. Man, I'm having headaches thinking about this. And I had, you know, I had money. I was blessed at that time to have a, 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 a few people in my life that were looking out. So I wasn't. You know, wanting for anything, and then I didn't really care. I had a job. I always saved. I had cosmetics, and that was all I really worried about: having stamps and cosmetics, deodorant, toothpaste, and things like that. Food, you know, I ain't no small guys you see, but I didn't really care about that. They gave us food in child hall, um, and I ate the beans most of the time. You know, I'm vegetarian, but uh, I, I was reading the Quran one day, and it says something. Um, I was reading the Bible and I, I came across a verse. I can't remember, so I won't quote that one yet, but I'll locate it. But when I read the Quran, it was one that said, if someone transgresses, you know, and, and in the footnotes, it was that they owed you. And it said, and you forgive them, and the law will reward you, you know, for it is a mercy to them and yourself. And I said, hold. Oh. So they're not really taken from me if I say that's yours. So I ain't got to stay up all night thinking someone trying to rough me off because in prison, you know, like the streets, you let somebody get fired out, they take it. In your mind, you wonder, man, this dude walking around, he telling the selling, man, I got him, he's soft, he's weak. So I'm like, you know, he gonna pay that five dollars one way or another, you know? And, uh, you know, I had done that. People owe me, I go to their cell, like, hey man, you gonna come up off that or I'm coming in there and we gonna catch some wreck. But man, when I read that, I swear, I told the brother later on that evening, I said, man, you keep that. He's like, nah, I got you, bro. Kyle, I got you, man. I was like, nah, 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 nah. It's all right. Real talk. You got it. It's okay. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking, you can't come back and get it. You can't, you can't get nothing. A scrap of paper. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, I was relieved at uh, letting it go. You know, I was relieved. And I'm not saying forgive everything. That's not me. Those that know me know that's not me. But I am saying when you put things on a scale, ask yourself, what's worth holding on to right what's worthy what's worth internalizing what's worth holding in your mind and your heart and in your life because as you travel you hold this stuff because in order to uh not deal with the person especially if they're around you you got to hold it close you got to hold that thing like a cloak or you let it go it's not for me to say that's just for me to throw out because like i said i saw guys in there have bonds they walked every day and one transgression, one argument, that, 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 I don't care what you say, man. I don't care F that nigga, F you, nigga. They finished. No more friendship, no more working out together, no more playing ball together, no more you look out in the yard and you see them two guys walking together and you know they know everything about each other's family. They didn't seen each other's pictures. All that's gone because one said F you and F you, nigga. Whatever, whatever. 
that's done. So ask yourself if that's if you're okay with that when it comes to family. If you're okay with that when it comes to some people, right? Because we're gonna make mistakes one day. We're gonna ask somebody to forgive us. And if they don't, we need to ask ourselves, who did not forgive to earn this lack of mercy, right? So with that said, I appreciate you all. You know, really as always, man, supporting me, walking this journey with me, um, and appreciating what I'm striving to do and what I'm striving to offer. I'm a, I'm a work in progress. I'm learning every day, striving to evolve, striving to learn, striving to grow, striving to make a difference out here. So wherever you are, if you're sitting in prison, if you're sitting in jail, if you're sitting in the group home watching this, if you're sitting at home, if you're in your car, wherever you are, I pray that you're learning lessons, whether it's from me, whether it's from someone that really cares about you, whether it was seeds planted years ago, I pray that you just say to yourself, let me grow today a little more than I grew yesterday. Just a little more. Let me do something that's a little harder because it's, it's okay. It, we do the easy things. You know, we go to the weight pile. A lot of guys, if you notice, we lifting the curl. We doing the chest. That's easy. Check us out. We got some guts, you know, because we ain't trying to get on that mat and do them crunches and all that, you know. So, you know, let's do something that's a little harder today, right, that will be rewarded one day, you know, uh, whether we know it or not. I appreciate you all, you know, continue to follow, continue to share, continue to, you know, like and subscribe and do what y'all do, man, because I appreciate it, truly. Thank y'all, man. Have a good day. Have a good day. Peace.